sharing cloth and money in the voting area is not allowed. Please. So, Eric, that's uh, quite a clear indication. Uh, just I, like what we I, said I, I, earlier. I told you. I mean, what Jacob said I, earlier. I mean, yes. that's, that's exactly what we were discussing. It, they, they would do it, but that's why I said what the party may want to do as the last effort to block, um, uh, change the direction of what the party may wish for. All political parties want the best candidate to win. And so, if you go and bribe them, and they enter the polling, uh, the, the booth, and they don't vote for you because there will be no evidence, that's, that's it. But I will stop it there, and then we, we move on with the uh, conversation. Um, what I think uh, we want to witness, that is the impression I get, and that is perhaps why the party's anthem was played. There's a lot of excitement there. As the women were voting, the candidates for the various uh, youth organizers' uh, position were invited. The delegates have also been briefed, and I'm sure within the next few minutes, that process may also end. I've been joined by Elekem Kotoko. Elekem Kotoko, I know, is uh, a candidate, is aspiring for a position. I want him to share it with us. Uh, uh, an organizer or deputy? A deputy to the organizer. Why didn't you go for the ultimate? The other question would be why, did, why, did, why, why shouldn't I go for the deputy? And the question is you, you qualify to go for the ultimate. <laughs> yeah, very true. Uh, That's I hold, actually on the lighter I, side. I hold a very understanding that uh, what matters most is the display of your competence at wherever you are given the role to play. And uh, I hold that strong view that uh, at this crucial moment where we are a party going into battle 2024, uh, what, one of the critical departments that needs a lot of injection uh, is the organizing department. Uh, not only does it require somebody who is energetic, strategic, and understand the dynamics of the youth politics, but also the fact that we need somebody who is an effective communicator, an efficient mobilizer, and a team player. Uh, more importantly, somebody who understands that there is a need for us to face squarely the opponent we are going to battle with. Not downplaying the fact that my role is to actually complement that of the substantive. But it means that I make my mind available to uh, the substantive organizer. In fact, I like uh, the uh, initial response to uh, the, the, the con controversy I wanted to stoke by asking whether you didn't go for the bigger position. Yes, you've been known, many people agree that you are very articulate. Yes. And um, you come in at a time when similar concerns have been shared about the organizational structure of the party. Yeah. And many people would have thought that in as much as you have the youth wing, the women's wing, and then you have the national executives who manage the party from the top, many people have also felt that getting an efficient, active, and then influential national organizer drives the party's energy. That may have been missing, or it's not as strong as people want to see. Yeah. So how do you want to change the narrative? Yeah, uh, fortunately, you sitting here know me well. I've had my fair share of, uh, should I say, brutalities under student leadership, uh, integrally amongst other uh, events. But then, yes, the truth remains, uh, so long as that department requires very energetic, strategic and influential personalities, it is not only the main organizer who is going to function or perform the role. Uh, one other thing we need to take note of is the fact that when such rules exist, uh, the figureheads probably are the very ones who are very busy and need their deputies doing more of the legwork. And so being young and youthful, uh, ready to do the legwork, uh, I think it provides an impetus for me to lay bare what I can provide for the party, what services and skills I can make available for the party, and most especially to ensure that the victory that we believe we already have gotten is secured and not compromised. So I have made it a priority that at what point, give or take, even if half human is needed for that position, that Eli Kapotoko is one of those who would qualify to be there. Now let's look at um, 2024 in general. Yeah. 
there's no doubt it's going to be very competitive. In as yeah. much as um, some might say Ghanaians may have made up their mind or been elected, it means confidence has been reposed in you. And the, that is why there is a need for us to embolden them, engage them, and empower them. When we make them feel that confidence as leaders from the very base, they feel very responsible, they will act responsible, and they will make sure that all throughout the stages, they will be with the leadership. And don't forget that this leadership we are talking of, the base is what makes it stronger. At the very top is just a few. So the base is what is stronger. And if we get them all to whip in line, they understand. Now, we may not necessarily outline everything that we intend doing out here, either for strategic or security reasons. But then, there's a need for us to make sure they are properly equipped, well resourced, and well prepared. Even in mind, that look we are going into a battle with an opponent that is very cunning an opponent that can tell you that uh, go have a, a, a urine and bath or an opponent that can tell you that go have biscuit and come back and so we don't want instances where it will look like somebody will come out and tell us I didn't have biscuits I'm sorry it, it doesn't sound nice even repeating these things but it happened and we don't want semblance of such instances again going to the polls in 2020. This dovetails into my next question yeah where there's also this perception that people scramble for positions yeah. and go to sleep and when others realize they are not efficient and even want to support them yeah. they come Complain. Yeah. These things recur from time to time whenever the party is going to bigger national elections. Yeah. Now, if you get the nod, let me even break it down this yeah. way. Are you privy to this concern and how does it come to you? I, I am, and it is true. However, you will see there's that much that jostling for positions this time around. Because everybody can feel the euphoria. Everybody can feel the air of victory. But then there are two things always that come to play. There are those who are interested in the title, and there are those who are interested in the job. We ought to look through, look beyond the fact that somebody is ready or prepared. Are they actually ready to do the work that is required of them? Because, for instance, you don't expect me to be a deputy organizer and want to always be in tie and jacket, sitting at conferences, uh, speaking big English and not understanding the base. There's a need for you to have constant engagement. That is why I was referring to the three E's, engaging them, emboldening them and empowering them. So yes, there's always that jostling because we are a party that is not seeking power and it looks like many think they are, they are becoming complacent that the, the, the Nanado led disastrous government has uh, led us into a mess. That means it's a panacea for the NDC's victory. That alone is not enough. It will not cut. Because they know what they are doing and we must also plan and prepare for them. If we don't plan, it means we are actually failing. Now, would you support or what would you recommend to your boss? Assuming you have won. Because I can't wish you bad luck. I can only wish you good luck. If you won and you realized from your your links at the at the base of the party yeah. that some officials, elected officials, are not efficient, are not working, what would you do? There there must always be measures to be put in place in order to whip everybody in line. However, we must also admit that in every human institution, there are going to be laggards. These laggards need to be incentivized in many ways. There are some people who have genuine concerns as to why they are laid back, why they are not moving along. But the most important thing that we need to ensure is to, is to, is, is to make it a point that as a party that has got leadership, there must be constant engagement. And the fact also remains that when we are elected, there are some who, look, you may even have some who may compromise, but the majority must stay strong and firm. That is to also make sure that, look, the constant situations are made known to many. There's a need to have an appreciation of the concerns that are raised out there by the Guardian. The NDC is not trying to go into power for NDC people. It is going into power to salvage the situation, to rescue this country, to restore sanity and make sure that the untold economic hardships that is visited on us is not the case again from 2025. 
So, for instance, the, the, the guy out there who is not NDC or MPP or who is even MPP should know that we are talking for them, we are speaking for them. So when we have challenges of people who are not falling in line, there may be other means of addressing them. Either we first address them, call them to order, the look, this is the line we must all talk. If they are failing to do so, there must be other measures put in place to ensure that they don't fall behind. Some may not be deliberate, others may even be deliberate, but we must always have mechanisms to make sure that everybody is swept in line for the common goal of securing victory and protecting the ballot to make the Ghanaian restful. Okay, so Elikam, um, whether you win or not, you will still be a leading member of the party because you are a member of the communication team yes. and you play some efficient role at that level. What would you tell delegates? Because today uh, the event is wrapping up peacefully, but along the line it was full of tension, suspicion yeah. here and there, yeah. and your party is preaching unity after the Congress. What would you share with delegates before you walk out from uh, yeah, House What I would want to say to delegates today is that just as they are casting their votes today, there's a need for everybody to ensure that they look beyond just personalities they know or can acquaint themselves with. There's a need for us to look for credibility. The fact that there are people who are more competent, who are ready to serve and are capable in delivering the mandate that will be given to them. I have provided or availed myself as one of those. The fact being that as a party going into, 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 into battle, we need to prepare very well. The, the, the legwork, as I mentioned, will be done largely by the youth, by the young men. So being part of the uh, uh, organizing department, then being youthful as well means it, make, it gives me a double-edged sword in order to function as a deputy organizer and also have some level of control or some level of influence over the youth. Don't forget that the added advantage I feel I always bring along is the teeming hundreds of thousands of young men that remain on social media or the new media who also need to be mobilized. And so, you see, the organizing department requires an effective mobilizer. The added advantage of being an efficient communicator is an icing on the cake that you need to blend in order to ensure that, look, let's get out there and get the votes. Because there are many who even feel that, look, then this is the next alternative. They are the next government, but are they really ready for the power? So we must show readiness and capability when that time comes. So that will reflect in the crop of leaders that will be elected. And I have no doubt that I am myself one of those that will be looked I, I, I am in the studio with Elekem Kotoko. is aspiring to be the one of the deputy national organizers of the party. In fact, after listening to him, I would say he has passed my exam. And if I were a delegate, perhaps he would get my vote. But that's just on the uh, lighter side. By your hand, is it to pay or what? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think a metal snapped and uh, hit my and left you don't, th you don't think it is to pay? Yeah. I know, I don't think so. You, you not, don't want to pay. Don't, don't, don't let me speak away here. Baga, baga, uh -huh. baga. <laughs> <laughs> and so what happened was that uh, it hit my hand I, okay. a day on the eve of the vetting. And uh, I took it lightly because I thought it was just a, a little hit. So I was up north and uh, began feeling too much pain. So four days ago, I was in the hospital and we, dis we discovered through an x-ray that uh, uh, the small bone is fractured. Okay. So the, f the fiberglass is uh, probably giving some correction to me. Hopefully in six weeks, I should be back in 100%. Right, and uh, next week, we are going for the elections at Accra Sports Stadium. Elikam Kotoko, thank you very much. I wish you good luck. And I uh, will be engaging thank you so many much. more of um, the aspirants as and when any of them uh, passes through uh, to engage them while we wait for the results as uh, the youth wing and the women elect their leaders. Wisdom Hedejome uh, was uh, inside uh, the uh, conference center and then he shared with us some figures. I'll be um, doing that with you but before I go into that, Emmanuel Azdoadjome he wants to be a national executive committee member of the party national executive committee member many people would have thought that that one is for gray-haired men are you old or young what, <laughs> so what is inspiring you to go for uh, yeah. uh, uh, that position? Yes. What inspires me is that, in fact, most of you know, we thought it's for grey hair people. Yes. So this time round, we the youth have also shown interest to show that the neck is not for only grown people. First, with the youth council equally take part. So, in fact. This is why I'm coming on board to inspire 
more youth that they can also try in the future to take more of the, uh, 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 party portfolios. Now, the National Executive uh, Committee of every political party yeah. uh, appear to be part of the decision making body at the top, yes, where right. whenever there are problems, the adjudication processes are given direction and so on, they play that role. Yes. That is why it is perceived as if the elderly within the political party are the ones who occupy that position. But as a young man who is uh, going for that big fish, yeah. some would ask, uh, have you played other uh, leading roles in the party over the years that yes. makes you feel that you are recognized, appreciated, and therefore will get the vote from the delegates? Yes. I may say yes, because uh, I have been at the branch level. From the most central constituency, yes, I have been working with them to the regional level and uh, at the uh, school level. That was the tertiary. Yes, I was a state president, organizer, secretary. Yes. Before. Okay. So, so, but before you go, last question. Yeah. Uh, have you gone around the country? It's expensive. How do you do it? Or the assumption is that, uh, yes, you don't need to go out to get everybody endorsing you. What strategy are you adopting? Yes. And in fact, uh, I can say I've been able to talk seven out of the system. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in fact, it, it was why I, I said no. I won't be able to continue again. So I started to do a uh, digitized campaign, which is through phone call, through SMS and also uh, on Zap and Facebook campaign. Yeah. So you are taking advantage of technology yes, sir. to campaign, which sounds inspiring. Emmanuel Adjoma wants to be a national executive committee member of the NDC. So thank you very much uh, for uh, speaking to us. Uh, so um, Wisdom Hedejome gave us a breakdown of the delegates who are voting. And as we told you, the Ashanti region appears to be the region with the highest number of delegates. So if you look at those who are voting for women organizers, we are told they are about 886 or 856, so at least a little over 800. 128 of them are from the Ashanti region. The Greater Accra region follows with a total number of 111 delegates. And then I think it's closely followed by Eastern region with 79 delegates. And then Northern region comes with 60 delegates and it goes on and on. And if you look at the youth organizer position, as many as 178 are the delegates from the Ashanti region. Greater Accra has as many as 142 delegates. And it's followed by, I think, um, Central region with 84. And it goes on and on. And those are the details. Now, these figures, if uh, any of the candidates have these, uh, uh, that, that they are looking at this data, it will inform how they campaign. Because if I know that one basket, Ashanti region, can give me as much as 128 delegates, and then we have 800 and a little over 800 delegates voting for the women organizer position, that will be a little um, um, over. 10% or 12% of the total number of votes. And so if you target a few regions and you don't even go to all the regions and they agree to overwhelmingly endorse you in block, it means that you may be counting your way to victory. Um, Randy is here with me. Randy, it's been back and forth. Yeah, of course. I, I'm, I'm fully back now. And uh, thanks to wisdom. For good, I guess. So, yeah, for good. For good. <laughs> Please. I tell you. <laughs> but of course, you take a look at these figures, for instance, uh, it means a lot to the various regions and also the, the delegates. Now, you take a look at the Ashanti region, Greater Accra region, and then uh, closely followed uh, by Central region. These are actually going to be the determinants of whatever might come out of um, tonight's election of voting because they have the huge numbers as compared to the others interestingly i checked for i looked out for the voter region and uh, for the women's wing uh, they are just 55. so it doesn't really I, 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 mean I, am, much. I am i am praying that before we wrap up we should be able to speak to any of the party executives to yeah. help us to understand how do they arrive eventually at arrive at 
identify people, identifying people as delegates. Yeah. Because all of us may be members of a, a particular political yeah. party. So how is somebody chosen among the lot as delegates? And they are very few. So if you come to Greater Accra Region, if the population is about 4 million, 5 million, you would notice that about half or maybe a little under 1 million may want to be identified as members of either NDC or MPP. So if only 128 of them are going to vote, they may be constituency executives, yeah. they could be any other person. So we just want that fine detail well explained. But you have more to add, isn't it? Well, so I, I, I just want to go through perhaps the entire list so our viewers can understand uh, how the turnout will look like so that I mean it becomes quite easier when we are collating and then counting is ongoing so that when the declaration is made you know exactly uh, what the figures will look like like you mentioned for the women um, category you have the Shanti region with uh, some 128 uh, delegates I have four region 26 delegates Bono uh, with 35 delegates Bono is 31 central region 63 northeast so northeast we can understand that uh, they are actually uh, a new region so it's expected to have these figures uh, they have 17 uh, greater Accra has 111 delegates and uh, then when you move to the northern part uh, they have 60 uh, OT also has 24 because I mean it's quite understandable they are also a newly created region so they have 24 uh, delegates Savannah region has 30 uh, no 20 I beg your pardon Savannah has 20 Upper East has uh, 46 Upper West has 38 Volta has 55 Western region has 43, Western North has 27, Eastern region has 79. And mind you, Eastern region actually came up with some controversies earlier, especially with the uh, youth way, where some injunctions uh, was uh, laid on some constituencies here and there. And then the interesting part that I really want to understand and get more clarification to is the national and MPs. Well, we'll understand the MPs, but when you talk about the national, what exactly are we looking at? And I know that, so that that when, where when, when you talk about the MPs, I'm sorry, but when you talk about the MPs, we know we have 20 female NDC MPs in Parliament. So, who are coming from the national to make it 22? I, I, I will not hazard that. Let us leave that to the party to come and explain. Yeah. They may have their constitution. I had a chat with uh, Alex Sekbefia just a couple of days ago and he created the impression that their constitution has been designed in such a way that when it comes to the women's wing of the party, they believe that the members of parliament who are women have influential roles to play and they play, uh, they support these groups and therefore the constitution has made it such that when it comes to the women organizers uh, position of the party, the female MPs will vote. That's why you saw Dr. Zenato, yeah. you saw the yeah. Ketu South MP, yeah. a number of them, I saw Elizabeth Jare, I saw a number of them there, there are about 20, yeah. I'm told. But for the youth organizer position, the male MPs will not come to vote as a group. Exactly. And so the party may have a well-defined uh, constitution that spells out how to identify and then put these groups together. So we are not hazarding, we will make a conscious effort to let them explain to us uh, what this is all about. So, uh, well, thank you. But in a total, uh, we expecting some 800, a little over 800 um, delegates to cast their votes for the women's wing uh, contest. Now, let's look at the youth because that actually sparked the controversy. Because some claim uh, the Tain list was excluded here and there. But fortunately enough, that was actually uh, resolved amicably and, of course, voting commenced. But again, you take a look at the list. Ashanti region has the highest number of delegates with 178. So it means that the Ashanti region matters when it comes to the internal elections of the NDC. Yeah, not NDC as such. When you listen to politicians, sometimes they say there's something called gerrymandering. Okay. And if you look at the number of regions we had, the Ashanti region is the biggest region here yeah. in this country. So obviously, it will have more constituencies compared to other regions. So the number of constituencies will determine, apart from the population in those regions. For example, the population in, in Accra, I think by the last census, 
is higher than Ashanti region. Yeah. Ashanti region had always been yeah. the the biggest in terms of population, and so if the number of constituencies are more, it will translate into the delegates that we have. Over the years, there have been careful uh, realignment of the constituencies in some of the regions, and it appears as if that may have given that leverage to Ashanti region beyond the population size that we all know they have. But you'd notice that recently new regions were created yeah. and people are still asking the questions that why is it that Ashanti region, which is the biggest, biggest. in terms of size or greater Accra in terms of size, have not been hived into other regions. Then you go to northern region, yes, it's big, but what is the population there? So you end up with a northeast, northwest, and northeast, you go to Savannah, you go to OT region, and you check the figures, and there are very few numbers. As we speak, there are rumors that EC is thinking of creating new constituencies. I've heard rumors that they want to go and create more constituencies in the Ashanti region, and then they may do so in a few other strategic regions, maybe for the advantage of any political party. I wouldn't mention names, but I believe that if that so happens, it will end up in what we are seeing now, which is not fair to uh, political parties in general because people, if you look at the political history of this country, may vote and block depending on where the strongholds are and so on and so forth. And that is what is translating into what we are seeing now. But the truth is that these delegates may come. You heard some people arguing behind us. Yeah. There were people yeah. who came from different regions yeah. and they were discussing the two chairman uh, positions, the, the race, the, the, the candidature. Yeah. So they were looking at General Johnson, Nasir Dunketia, mm -hmm. and Samuel Fusampofu. And the debate at the back were looking at their track record, their commitment, the brevity, whatever they want to bring on board, uh, what they stand for, the message, and so on and so forth. I was eavesdropping and I found it interesting. They came from the same region, but some of them were divided. And so it will tell you that this particular election, many people may not be voting as a group. The, gone are the days where people will decide that all of them will wear this branded African uh, traditional uh, or Ghanaian traditional wear or what you call tie and dye or whatever material you are wearing. So when they come, you see all of them dressed in a certain way and you should know that they are all going to go to the certain direction. The, same pattern. the electorate is becoming more discerning. The electorate is understanding that if you go and follow money and you go and vote for a weak candidate, you then pray that your party will win. Otherwise, you are rather collecting money and helping your party to stay in opposition forever. But if you want your political party to win, yes, take the money. If the people who are ready to be dashing money, which the electoral commission has spoken against, the CDD, other governance institutions have spoken against, you go and spread your money. But let the delegates know that they have been in opposition from 2016 till now. Ghanaians have hope in them. Ghanaians believe that they have a better record. Ghanaians want them to win. Ghanaians will give them their support. But if they go and disappoint Ghanaians by voting for people who can't do what Ghanaians want to see them do on the ground, the floating voters will not follow them. And so this is a very decisive moment for political parties and the delegates i believe are not children yet they should be smart enough to know that they want power and not to satisfy individuals who are giving them what we are hearing was happening in the conference room every one thing that worries me is the fact that our constitution frowns upon bribery and corruption and also i mean enticing delegates to vote for you how are we not able to identify the people who are engaged in this why are we not punishing these people? Because you heard from one of the organizers earlier that people are doing blah, blah, blah. blah. Life. Do you get it? Why are you not getting the people? Why are you not punishing these people to serve as deterrent to the others that might want to do this? Mind you, there is a phase two of this particular election that has huge numbers. That also has key figures, I mean, in, in the party. So if you're allowing this, indirectly you are going to promote this in the other phase of the competition or in the contest i hope I have why are you not clamping down on these people it's, it's an interesting question but i wish i had a lot of vocabs but i remember a slappy and a slapo or whatever um, and i'm tr trying to use this for the purpose of a, a person who is bribing and the person who's yeah. receiving it yeah i don't know how to couch it to make it a bit uh, funny on the lighter side
sometimes they say it's a source of motivation they took a vehicle and drove all this far and so we are giving them some food or some little allowance okay or we are just uh, patting them on the back so if the person receiving is saying i didn't take bribe but it was some form of motivation what can you do that is why but, the, but, but we should look at the quantum for instance if somebody is traveling from Volta region to cape coast i mean how do you give yes. that person more i, than I don't have also? evidence i don't have evidence i, I agree i don't have evidence. Looking at a general conversation yes, i don't have evidence if it yeah. is widespread as we speak yeah. now and i'm saying that i would also not be naive by saying that it won't happen there will be some semblance of uh, this thing going on but what i'm saying is that the bigger picture is for people to market themselves and to be accepted by the party you'll be surprised that some people will not pay any bribe or they may give their token a poor man's uh, a token that the person is giving to the delegates but if the delegates believe that that person is capable and can deliver the delegate will vote overwhelmingly from for those people and it has happened several times people can give all they want but if they are not good they are not good that's why my caveat is that the people voting for delegates know that they are voting for delegates and in two years time they are going for a bigger election which is an election that is going to determine the fate of the youth yeah. and the women who form the majority of the blocks of people who go and vote in any election and so if they know as young people as young women and they are going to elect people who should lead their party and they know they have children and their children's children will depend on what is going to happen in this country and what will determine their fate in future they should think twice and use their common sense to go into the ballot box and do what they think they wish for themselves and their children today you hear a lot of people say that ghana has a crisis that may take 10 15 20 years to solve that is huge it is a bold statement and so if the people going into such an election are not thinking of something that will be a rescue mission where the people they are electing will lead the pack for that rescue mission then they should forget it but i don't think that there are people who don't know their left and right and so right. let's uh, um, um, pray for the best as far as their wishes are concerned thank you i'll need you to hold on for me for a second we would have to cross over to the main auditorium to see what exactly is happening uh, stay with us on Wizard tv and tv xyz we are back with more Bora Group, Bora Group, please. We appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OT Regional Youth Organizer.
Secretary is in the house. The Santi Regional Secretary is in the house. Dr. Frank Amwakuni. Dr. Frank Amwakuni. A very intelligent young man. Central region. Central region. Central region. Central region. Delegates from Central region, please slow down on the morale. Please slow down. It's obstructing the voting process. Please slow down on the morale. Central region. Thank you, Central Region. Thank you, Central Region. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Central Region. Central Region. Central Region. 
please slow down the morale. Central region, please slow down on the morale. Rasta, Rasta, please tell your people to slow down. When we talk to you, you have to listen. Please slow down and stop the morale. Central region, please stop the morale. Constituency Youth Organizers and their deputies, other youth organizers from the following regions. Constituency Youth Organizers and their deputies, other youth organizers from the following regions to note this announcement. Afo region, Bono region, Bono East region, Oti region, and Central region. Central region. You are voting at polling center A. Polling center A. Constituency youth organizers and their deputies, other youth organizers from the from the following regions, to take note of this announcement. Ahafo region, Bono region, Bono East region, Oti region, and Central region. You are voting at Pooling Center A. Pooling Center A. Thank you. The first one and then B is the other one. So you are voting here. Police station for women organizers. Center A. Center A. Center A. Center A. Are you done? Please let us know. It's the officials at Women Police St Center A.
Let us all be patient. Yes, Samu, when you know, 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 Gradually, we are coming to the hand of the pools. Delegates. Delegates in the queue. Youth delegates in the queue. And police station B. Police station B. Police station B. Please form one queue. Please form one queue. Thank you. for women organizers center a center a is your officials please are we done is your officials Station Center A. Women Police Station Center A. Please check for us. Are they done? We are done with the women organizers. Women organizers voting for women organizers has just ended. We are done with the women organizers. We are done with the women organizers. Security, please barricade. Barricade for the bits. The barricades should be forward a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A photo. Delegates from Greater Accra Region. Delegates from Greater Accra Region. Youth organizers. Please check your queue. The queue. Please check the queue. Deputy Regional Youth Organizer Gideon. Please come close to the podium. Please come to the podium, please.
Gideon, Gideon. Get that crap. Yeah.
Zaza, please step down. Please, agent, step down. You'll be called, right? You'll be called. Please step down. Uh, step down, please. Please step down, please. Mr. Jifa Gunu. Mr. Jifa Gunu. Jifa Gunu. Officials placed within the year. AC officials, electoral commission. AC officials, please. Please get close to us. Thank you. Thank you. Comrade, please. It's, not, it's unacceptable. What you are doing is unacceptable. Please.
Okay, so um, at the uh, moment, uh, this is what I can share with you. The women have finished uh, the voting process. Um, the youth organizers are waiting uh, for the 10 of the delegates to complete. And then I believe that after that, the Electoral Commission will begin the sorting and the collation of results. Uh, one would have thought that when the women finish, immediately they will begin uh, sorting and then count the ballot. But we would notice that there's a lot of anxiety in the conference room. So the moment EC does that, the attention will go there, the whole place will be very chaotic. So what they are doing is uh, the best, that they allow the youth uh, to, uh, the, the delegates to finish the process of uh, electing their um, youth organizers. Uh, as we speak, we are told Greater Accra region is taking its turn and you can see a number of people waiting to go and vote and you see others who are walking away from the voting area. So that is the picture um, inside the conference room now and for those who have been monitoring uh, what we have been sharing on our TV screens, uh, you notice that occasionally the facilitators, i.e. the local organizing committee members or the EC will make one announcement here or the, the other and then move on. Still, as they are voting, people are still energetic and you can see uh, posters of some of the candidates. I see Nyane uh, which is uh, the back of a t-shirt somebody is uh, displaying. I see Pablo's uh, sticker there and of course several of them. So at this stage I see Oba or Obama hashtag two. So uh, all of them are centered there. Ideally, I would have thought that the EC will avoid uh, what they are. So there's an announcement. So they are asking for order in the house. So let me continue the commentary. So far, the process has been very peaceful. The process has been very, very peaceful. Uh, there was a little uh, chaos or confusion, misunderstanding based on the delegates list that have uh, since been sorted out. And the delegates, you can see, uh, they are uh, making mockery of each other. Uh, you would never imagine that just a few minutes ago, they were in groups uh, campaigning for their candidates and you would have thought that hell would break loose. But as uh, the voting starts, they are there as one family. But I can tell you that just after the ballots have been cast and results start trickling in, the whole atmosphere will be charged again. I've gone round a few minutes uh, uh, ago and I noticed that many of them are relaxing along the street and uh, they are just uh, waiting, taking fresh air, waiting for EC to finish the process. Wisdom. Uh, you were drawing attention to some. Yes, so I was telling you that as we could see on our screen, that was uh, George of Ariadro, uh, Pablo, who was actually still having some engagement with the delegates. Like you earlier said, now Greater Agria Region uh, is having their turn to cast their ballots. Uh, all of these uh, persons from Greater Agria Region, all the constituencies have come in with their numbers to ensure that they cast their ballot for their preferred candidates. So exactly the point you're making as to why the EC didn't have to count that of the women, I'm sure would have created some level of confusion if the EC should say that, well, we, we are done with the women, so let's count. And then the jubilation, I'm sure it would have marred the processes ongoing because clearly all these two elections are being held in the same auditorium so um randy a brief comment so that we can allow uh, those uh, following ways of tv tv xyz to just relax and then just uh, take the rhythms uh, to relax and then observe quietly while we wait for ec to wrap up all right so i must say that um, generally um it has been peaceful like you mentioned up until when that um, misunderstanding popped up, which was resolved amicably later. So if you, if, even if you can watch it on the screens, it tells you that, look, this is an internal play. 
it's just a family affair. Whoever is contesting, whoever, I mean, they are delegates are together, they are cheering each other, more or less like teasing each other. So we, we are hopeful that we should be ending this uh, process pretty shortly and the declaration will be made as soon as possible so that those who are coming from very far away places can also uh, try as much as possible to head home uh, safe and sound. I mean, I just went inside and I realized that, yes, uh, like you mentioned, the women's contest has ended. And um, for the youth wing, Greater Accra, they are spotted in the green shed. And so they are still casting their uh, votes as well. I'm pretty sure they, they will uh, soon finish. And then whatever the EC would have to do, uh, will do. And again, one other thing that I noticed when I went in, uh, some people were chanting one of the name of one of the aspirants or candidates. So the EC official and then one of the MC says, so even if you can hear, the gentleman wearing the t-shirt and all of that, stop it, you can't do that. You, you can't do that. It's, it, it's against the rules of the game. I mean, you can't campaign at this crucial hour. It, I mean, campaign is over. We are actually at the tail end of the whole process. You can't be allowed to do that. Well, so, I mean, basically, we, we are hopeful that in a short while, this whole process should, should end. So, if you are home and you are watching Waze or TV or TV XYZ, this is uh, the live feed from the uh, UCC main auditorium where the NDC is electing its youth and women organizers. It's the 10th NDC Youth and Women Conference 2022. Next week, by this time, uh, you'd have been following us from the morning as far as the NDC's national conference is concerned. It will be taking place at Accra Sports Stadium um, on the 17th of December 2022. That event will be the mother of all the elections which will be climaxing it. Uh, we are told that at that event they will be looking at their constitution. Uh, the constitution, if there are reviews that must be considered, they will look at it and it will be adopted. At that event, uh, we are told that the former president will be addressing them. Obviously, the national chairman, the general secretary, will be giving their report. And then uh, the main conference uh, will begin. And that one will be bigger because we know about 9,000 delegates will be converging at the Accra Sports Stadium compared to here at the University of Cape Coast where a little over 1,800 are actually uh, voting to elect uh, the youth and women leaders. But what will happen in Accra will be a bit more uh, competitive and of interest to every Ghanaian, most especially the ruling party, which would want to know whether it is Okosan Popo or Johnson Asedun Ketia, or it's going to be um, uh, Elvis Afri Yankra or Fifi Kweti or uh, Dr. Peter Buama uh, Otukono. And then there is another candidate who is um, uh, something, I, I think I'll find a name and then share with you while the conversation goes on. Wisdom, do you know that name, the fourth candidate? The general said there are three. Okay, then I, I think I'm right. So I was trying to look for a name that doesn't exist. So the three of them are contesting for the general secretary position of the party. Then we have the Zongo Caucus, which is also of uh, keen interest to the party and, of course, the ruling party. The reason is very simple. One of NPP's strategy of breaking NDC's dominance within the, uh, what has been identified as the Zongo community was to create the Zongo ministry and now what they describe as the Zongo Development Fund. Because the Zongo community, uh, by extension the Muslim community, had been traditionally people who vote for the NDC. And the historical antecedents that we have followed suggest that the Northern Belt was very deprived. They saw the facelift that transformed that part of the country when Jerry Rawlings was uh, the military leader and later president of the country. And even at the point, he won a Global Hunger Award and used part of that money to establish the University of Development Studies. And so many people there feel that he played a key role in transforming the, the development of the area. And more so, you notice that he came across as somebody who was trying to project the image of the people of the north. So he was known for his traditional 
cassock and then uh, long sleeves, which was a style of dressing which became a style people adopted. And so NPP's attempt to break that dominance was the creation of um, the Zongo uh, Ministry and later the Zongo Development Fund. And so they'll be interested in finding out who will be leading the NDC and weigh the person's capacity to drive NDC's interest in those areas vis-a-vis -vis what they are trying to do by way of little, little investment here and there. So uh, next Saturday is going to be the biggest of all what NDC has been doing so far. And once that process is complete, they would have known their new national leaders and now they will be planning for the bigger, uh, the, sorry, the election of the presidential candidate. And we know some names have uh, popped up. We don't know whether the... Well, then I think we'll have the um, primaries, the parliamentary primaries as well, uh, where the various constituencies will elect whoever will represent them at the general elections before, yes, yes, most of them. So that's, 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 that. I just want to bring that on board. It's instructive uh, because uh, we are still talking uh, uh, about 2024 elections. So we are told around March, um, if everything goes according to what we've heard, NDC would have elected their flag bearer. We've seen one or two names pop up, but uh, let's leave it at, as a competition and see how delegates will eventually vote. And that one, the electoral uh, register is bigger. And so you may find people in their tens of thousands who will be voting compared to only 9,000 who will be choosing, and it will be very competitive. Uh, what I see uh, uh, as an issue of interest to opponents will be by what margin will the person who wins uh, be endorsed. Because if you remember in 2018-2019, when the NDC was selecting a flag bearer, uh, there was this uh, rumor that people were hoping to see that you win 50%, 60%, and then they will translate that into a campaign message that his own party does not overwhelming Lingui and um, 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 accept him. So he was virtually rejected and to be used as a campaign tool against his uh, candidature. But unfortunately, in as much as we had big uh, stalwarts in the party, the Spio Gabres, the Gusitandos, the uh, uh, Joshua Labis, and the list is tall. Several of them uh, who contested him, I think he pulled over 95% or so. And that suggested that though he lost 2016, and people used it against him that at least by 1 million plus uh, votes in terms of loss to uh, the opponent coming from opposition was huge. He made a strong case in 2020. So uh, next week, we are going to be in your homes just uh, as you have uh, accepted us since uh, mid-morning when we started our live broadcast. Our prayer is that the process will be smoother and then they can finish early. But at Crasco Stadium, when we spoke to the chairman of the uh, planning committee, we got the impression that a Crasco Stadium will be cordoned and then the inner parameter will be where the delegates will be. So the, is it the stamps will be available for observers, ordinary party members who can flood those areas and monitor proceedings. So the excitement at the stadium will be uh, quite interesting to watch. And more so, anywhere you know the former president goes, when NBC is having its function, it is like, and let me use it figuratively for the purpose of uh, the narrative on what we are watching. Uh, it's like the Jesus Christ who has come around and his uh, spirit or his presence uh, boosts their emotions and then their enthusiasm. So I think it will be exciting to watch. And so make sure you remember that uh, next week, by this time, you would have stayed with us because we will knock at your house, uh, your door. And whether you open it or not, we'll be hanging around your house. And all you have to do is to open the door, accept us, and then watch what we bring to you as far as the coverage is concerned. Wisdom. Exactly like you are saying. So, but then we are, we are hoping that next week, Saturday, uh, we wouldn't see some of these delays. And then when you go inside, you realize that the movement of the delegates is 
a bit cumbersome because they don't have that free space to operate. But then we do know that uh, the stadium will be a very big place, well organized, with well you know demarcated areas to help everybody who will go there. But then uh, you can enjoy the feet from within the confines of the conference room. We'll be back to give you more uh, perspectives. The gentleman with the poster at the police center A. Gentleman with the poster campaigning at police center A, please. It's not allowed. Please stop it. Olimbi, Olimbi, cool down, cool down, cool down. Olimbi, cool down, cool down, cool down. Thank you very much. We are almost getting to the close of the pools. Regional Chairman Professor Kofi Asedu is in the house.
the gentleman holding the posters and t-shirts at the cooling area please stop it please Unity 
so um, as uh, we've been sharing with you the elections appear to be over if you can see from um, the activities there it appears a lot more people have gone closer to yes the elections for the youth organizers appear to be over and the EC officials are carrying away uh, ballot boxes. I see agents following the EC officials. So you would notice that the area which appear to have been filled is uh, being cleared now. People are taking their positions and very soon, if indeed the elections are over, they would be waiting to observe the EC officials uh, put the ballot papers down for the sorting. Normally the sorting is done at different stages. What happened to witness? So you notice from the podium that we have four sets 